Welcome everybody, this is Gabriel Ryder here, representing the movement towards improvement, and you are now officially in the MTI podcast, brought to you by Fish and me, Gabe. Fish, uh, the MTI podcast, kind of spawned from other people's opinions of us, really. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, uh, we talk a little too much. Yeah, people said we uh, tend to be a chatterbox, Yeah, you know? I always had that problem in school, you know, Gabe, he said, yeah. you just can't stop talking. Sure. So we figured we would use our strengths and bring it to the people. Why not? Um, so really the premise of this podcast, the MTI podcast, which as you can see up here, actually, Fish, can we... Um, yeah, let's light it up. Let's huh? light it up. I mean, we didn't just get these lights at Joanne Fabrics for nothing. <laughs> yeah. This is part of, this is part of the... Yeah, I mean, you get to see, me. this is really behind the scenes, you know, you don't get to see all this stuff at ESPN. Yeah. This is like, whew. But MTI, Movement Towards, towards improvement. improvement. Yes, absolutely. So, I'm very excited to have Fish be my partner on this podcast because he's had, you know, over a decade, years of experience just on the PG Tour alone. Sure. Uh, working with the best players. And we just kind of want to use this podcast, whether it's um, talking about ideas or events based around athletes um, sports, business, just kind of want to premise everything around getting better and improving. Yeah, I think that's that's the key. That's the name of the game. I mean, improvement that, that, in that word right there. And I think um, I pulled up this quote. I, I love this quote. It's about one of a great golfer. He said, the greatest thing about tomorrow is I will be better than I am today. And that's how I look at my life. I will be a better golfer. I'll be a better person. I'll be a better father. I'll be a better husband. I will be a better friend, and that's the beauty of tomorrow. It's all about betterment. And so that's my biggest thing. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't have a lot of people help me. I remember asking a golf instructor for a lesson, and he quoted me 70 bucks. I'm <laughs> just some kid, I don't have $70. And that never, that never sat well with me then, and it still doesn't sit with me well now. I, I want to make a difference, and I want to give that information for free because nobody gave it away to me for free and now I want to give that away I mean I've acquired all this knowledge I want to push that and pass that along I think that's the only way you can truly have a decent legacy that's worth anything you've got to be able to push and help people get better and that's I think that's both of our philosophies in life I agree 100% fish and I feel like you go through certain stages where me and you kind of worked on ourselves a lot. Yeah. Went through the trials and the tribulations, went through the adversity, went and broke through those plateaus and stayed consistent. So we gathered that experience, gathered that knowledge, traveled and learned from different people. And now once you've acquired that, once you put yourself through the, the system, it's time to share that with other people. And I feel great about it. You know, I, I know there's kids in Ireland or Bangkok or Canada or Australia that don't have the resources available to them. And a lot of times when it comes to success, it really has to do with the opportunities and resources that are available to you through your environment. And what's so cool is about the internet, you know, what we're doing with these videos and podcasts and YouTube is we can literally share knowledge from a golf instructor in Palm Springs or a, a, a guy like Andy Patton now at TBC Scottsdale that's worked with, you know, web.com and PG Tour players. Yeah. And we can bring that to people and now everyone evolves quicker. Yep. We're, people aren't held back because they don't know what they don't know. Yeah. You know, we can give them putting drills or mental tips. And now, I feel like for this podcast, we'll talk a little bit about everything. Yeah. Technique, philosophy, character traits. You know, what really is the root cause of evolution, of adapting, of progress? And a lot of people don't really get to see it. You know, you were behind the scenes on the PGA Tour. You got to see everything that no one else sees. We see the guys at the leaderboard yep. and only the guys for that week. You didn't see them miss the cut, you know, the last four weeks in a row. Then, you know, like Paul Goetis, then go shoot to 59 or something, sure, sure, you yeah. know, whether it's personal struggles with their relationships, you know, or finances or family or friends. There's so many things that go into the results of someone's life. Yeah. And you got 150 people in the field and you got 150 stories that week and each one has got some kind of twist to it i mean i i can't imagine you know every event i mean that happens on the pga tour has got like 150 stories contained within it and each one of them is so different you know and they're and they're all worthy of being filmed 24 7 but they you know you only get the the cream of the crop that are just playing well that week yeah i think that's one of the most beautiful things about 
golf or life in general is every, everybody has a different story. Mm-hmm. Kind of like how you mentioned to me, we were talking before the show started. I mean, me and you are in the same room sitting right next to you know sitting right across from each other yep. and we had two different avenues to get here yep. but we also have a very similar purpose yep. similar similar mindset and similar goals and what we want to do which is very interesting so even with the professional golfers i see the junior golfers i see the instructors i see everyone kind of has a little bit different reason you know for what they're doing and i think if we can kind of get those stories and share those stories people can relate to them yeah. you know why is andy working so hard to be you know the best instructor he can be why is Davis Evans out there practicing? Why is Christian Campbell out there practicing? You know, what kind of ties these guys together and what's their their intrinsic motivation, you know, to work so hard where some people lack, you know, some people don't have that. And I think if we can more share that, share what these successful people do and why they do it, then other people, including ourselves, will be able to pick up on that, use that, and we can elevate ourselves. Yeah, we have an opportunity to bring something to the masses that's never been. I mean... When I started on PGA Tour, that was the only platform mm. that you could be around the best players in the world. That's the only way you could help a lot of great players. Truthfully, I mean, you're only one person. You can only do so much. Now the internet has allowed you to be in multiple places at one particular time across the world. It's, it's, a, it's a game changer. It's a whole new way to look at the game of golf and a whole new way to look at golf instruction. This right here, this podcast, this will be golf instruction. It's not as simple as just, hey, putting the club in a certain position. It's a mindset. We've talked about how intrinsic the game of golf is, how it's built into the core, not only just the core fashion, the muscles, but actually built in with a, in, in our mindset. And as golf instructors, we try to verbally relay a message intrinsically to, to kind of replicate a feeling. So, so we, that's why we use analogies all the time. Mm. We're trying to get our players to, to feel what we're trying to explain. You know, are you a boxer? No, are you a tennis player? Yeah, okay, so you'll know this feeling. So we try to relay that. So it's a verbal message to convey a feeling. And it's an intrinsic game. And so this right here, this is golf instruction. This is going to help people. Well, I think one of our goals, too, is to grow the game of golf. Yeah. And one of the ways that we can grow the game of golf is to push it through the Internet so that we can kind of get this information out to more people that wouldn't have that that motivates them or inspires them to go play or to get better you know and i feel like as you know um growth is very stimulating you know when you when you get complacent when you're getting the same results when your things are stagnant it's hard to be motivated for life yeah it's hard to have that that drive or that fire when you're waking up and whether you're in school whether it's your job and you're just doing the same redundant things every day and that's what You know, what drives us is the challenge. What's our next challenge? What's going to push us, you know, past where we were? And that always brings a a sense of enjoyment and a sense of fulfillment for me personally. You know, I mean, I've only lived once on this lifetime that I know of. So for me, I want to get the most out of it. I want to see, you know, what I can do, what I can achieve and kind of um, how I can help myself and how I can help others. Yeah, we talk about why statement. You know, that's something I ask a lot of people. You know, what's your why statement? What is the reason you you know why is the reason that you wake up in the morning why do you be why are you motivated what what motivates you to do what you do why do you wake up for a job you know why do you wake up you know for your family for bills why do you do those things you know, th- these are super important so i want to kind of take that a little bit further why do you play the game of golf is it to be a professional golfer you know is it because you can make millions of dollars playing the game right now currently because of tiger woods or is it just because you actually love the game and you want to get better at it and you love the challenge of it. Yeah. I think there's um, so many people who don't know why they do what they do, you know, and that's huge in terms of how you progress through life if you're always constantly doing things for other people. You know, I've known professional golfers that do it because they think that will make their dad proud, yeah. you know, or, you know, like you said, they want the fame, they want the nicest courses, they want the money, they want the women. You know, so there's a lot of type of shallow or materialistic, you know, reasons that will falter when those things don't come. You know, we, we know golfers that will golf to the day they die, whether they make a million dollars or no, one dollar. Yeah. You know, they just love golf. That's all they know. That's all they want to do. Whether they're playing good or playing bad, it's just what they'll continue. And those people, as we think, have the best chance of getting on the tour other than, you know, having to do it for somebody else. You yeah. Know? Well, they will make it on the tour. Mm-hmm. It may take them a long time. But they will make it on the tour. It's causality, right? Why is a sprinter good at sprinting? You know, look at his muscle mass, you know, versus a distance runner. You know, some of these guys, they're just built for the PGA Tour. It's just the way it's going to be. 
It's just, it's just that it just so happens. Some of those guys, they just love the game so much. They just, if it happens to make the PGA Tour, that's great. Although you and I talk a lot about this, and we've learned the hard way, focusing on strengths and focusing on weaknesses. This whole podcast is stemming from the fact that we recognize uh, our gift for gab. And why not turn that into a positive for us? Why not turn that into a podcast? You know, use our, what some people, you know, call, you know, a detriment. Why don't we use that as a strength? Yeah. And so that's my biggest thing is perhaps maybe those guys who love the game, they love it because they love it and the constant challenge of it. Maybe they're not superstars though. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, but they will make it to the PGA Tour, whether they're on it for, a, you know, a year or just. You know, you know, this is the thing too is let's say those guys don't make it to the PGA Tour, but it doesn't matter because that's what they love to do. Yeah, that's right. And then it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. But now if you're always comparing yourself to this is where I'm at and I'm not at the PGA Tour because that's yeah. what I want, you always have that conflict. You always feel disappointed in yourself. You yeah. always feel a little depressed. You always feel like you should be further than what you are. And you know, as you and I are coaches, Fish, and we've, we've been around players and coaches and juniors, we become aware of a lot of things that a lot of people don't get to see when, when, they're, when we're not communicating with our students, we're communicating with other instructors, or we're traveling around the world. So that's, I feel like that's another, you know, purpose to this podcast is bring awareness. Yeah. Bring awareness to what we see is could be holding a golfer back or a person back in fitness or business or golf and also share what we think causes success, effortless success. You know, for me, I mean, I started on my YouTube channel a year and 10 months ago, taking it seriously and it's been able to constantly progress because I'm kind of like you said, I'm doing something that's a strength for me. A lot of people don't feel comfortable being on camera and that's something that I didn't necessarily really have to work hard for or even consciously try. That was just something as I grew up through school and just hanging out with friends, I was just that outward person, you know, very external, very entertaining, very animated person. That's yeah. not something I had to work for. So when I started my YouTube channel, I immediately got success with very minimal effort because that's something I already had in the bag. Yeah. And really quick to kind of add on that, you'll see players on the PG Tour, I've, even, I've heard talk about like Luke Donald. You know, at one point he said he was really focusing on distance. He didn't have that. So you can imagine if you're playing with a Bubba Watson or a Dustin Johnson or Roy McIlroy, you know, who's maybe kind of close to, closer to your size like Roy, and he's hitting it, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards past you, you're like, gosh, I, I got to get more distance. And he said once he did that, he it took him away from his strengths, which was short game, wedges, and putting. And his whole game went bad because now his strengths started to deteriorate. So you know, one of the biggest things he learned is always keep his strengths strong. He can't play the same game as Dustin Johnson. He can't play the same game as Bubba Watson. So he has to focus on what he's good at, what his strengths are, and guess what? He can beat those guys if he focuses on those things. Yeah, I mean, keep this in mind. When you're working on your when you're working on your weaknesses, that is time away that you could be working on your strengths. And it's a little frustrating. It's hard. It doesn't come easily to you. So you got your strengths, you got weaknesses, you're working on your weaknesses, you're working on your weaknesses, you're working on your weaknesses, you falter, you feel like you're failing, you give up. And this is all time wasted. It's this back and forth scale. When you work on your strengths, you continue to work on your strengths, and you have other people around you um, to help you with your weaknesses and what you're not good at and keep you accountable. It's like, a, like let's say a NASA scientist, you know? He's really good with you know math and physics and engineering, whatever yeah. it may be. And he also wants to be a Tiger Woods or a professional golfer, yeah. you know? He's never played many sports, but he, he has the passion he loves. And he's like, I just want to get good at golf. And it'd be the same as if you took a Bubba Watson, who who just good at golf. He feels shots. He, he doesn't even know about TrackMan and flight scope and the technological side. But he's like, I want to be an astrophysicist. You're just getting two different people that their strengths, they're trying to you know build up their weakness so much. Like, I want to learn more math and geometry and stuff. But... Like you said, it would be one, extremely hard for them because their brains don't naturally work that way. And like you said, they'd probably become unmotivated because it wouldn't be enjoying you know, enjoying for them after a while. Yeah. Well, look at where the game's going. It's actually interesting you're using like a NASA scientist. It's moving that way. This this needle is moving in the game of golf to these technologies, a hyper movement where it allows more wind to go across turbulators, you know, and all these kind of fancy terms to gimmicky and marketing, right? You know, um, track man, all these numbers lost in translations. I mean, could you imagine what I try to, as golf instructors, you and I know we, we hold all facets of the game, but so many people are focused on one element of that game and that's the swing. Yeah. I mean, I have people commenting on my YouTube channel about my swing. And I'm like, guys, I don't care. You guys are telling the wrong person. Yeah. I'm not a professional golfer. And who cares aesthetically about a swing? That is one, you know, fifth of the game. You're not talking about my chipping. You're not talking about my putting. 
I mean, where's there some comment about my mental strength or, or my strategy out there? Course management. Course yeah. ma- none of that. I mean, it, it blows my mind if we really are believing that the swing is that important. You know, would would we ever break down a jump shot in basketball to the preciseness that we have of the golf swing? That seems so silly. Well, we've talked about this fish, and we've always. Um, Talked about the idea that each job attracts a certain type of person. Yeah. You know, when football, you're using your motions, you're using your physical strength. You got to kind of get pumped up. You got to go hit somebody every play. You know, it takes a real physical, outward person that's not afraid to hit somebody. Golf, as we've talked about, attracts more of an internal person. You have do have to do a lot of thinking. You know, what's the firmness or softness of the greens? You know, what's the wind doing? You know, what greens are we playing on this week? How tall or short is the rough? You know, what's you know, there's so many conditions that we have to talk about. The yardages, the pins, the slopes, the breaks, you know, it, it, you know, which holes to try to let go for, what, what pins to go for, what pins not to go for. So it does attract a, uh, a more internal person, mm-hmm. but it's still, at the end of the day, when it comes to stepping up over the shot, it still needs to be an instinctive, reactionary, athletic performance, much like a Bubba Watson on that spectrum. You have to find that balance between the two. Mm-hmm. And, you know, these Harvey Penix and these Butch Harmons, you know, they were teaching, you know, great golfers, some of the best golfers in the world without, um, you know, the, the, the Trackmans and the, the Flight Scopes and the KVS and the Sam Putt Labs. So there's some, there, you also know you can teach and coach a best player in the world without that stuff. Yeah. And, and it's really, for me, I, I want to just make sure that the, the instruments that we use, the technological instruments, aren't the, the masters of the golf instruction. It, it always depends about the instructor behind the instrument and how you use it. Those are just measuring devices. Mm -hmm. You know, how are we still, are we scoring better? Or is this, are you getting your swing in a better so-called position based on someone's teaching philosophy? And there's so many different teaching philosophies. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about a relationship here. You know, I mean, these golfers, for the preponderance of these golfers are introverts. Mm. I mean, what else do you expect? Young kid, you know, not not all of them, but a young kid who wants to actually play golf all day long when he's, you know, 11 years old. It's an escape mechanism a lot of times, you know, from whatever it has. Maybe a death in the family, maybe just kind of abuse, maybe actually you just want to just get away. Maybe you just you just like to kind of internalize a lot of things and you don't you don't, you're, you're not you're not you're you're shy. So, I think golf instructors can kind of bring um, an extrovert ...ness to it because they always have to be talking. They always have to be out there. They always have to be on stage. And I think when you put those two together, we talk about the strengths and the weaknesses. I think golfers in, intrinsically know that they're introverts a lot of times. And to have an extrovert, especially a really confident one, like a golf instructor like Butch Harmon and whatnot, can come and actually build a, a, a nice solidified team. I mean, look at Sean Foley. He's extremely extrovert. That's interesting you say that. I've never really thought about it. But when you do go practice golf, you don't practice with the team. Mm-hmm. You don't hang out with five guys running back and forth. You're usually on the range by yourself. You got your headphones in. Not social. You, no. You're chipping. You're putting. Um, that's very interesting you say that. And I feel like as coaches, as you and not me, you and I know, we have to be very aware of what a person needs. And, mm-hmm. and a lot of times, like you're alluding to, is we have to get somebody out of their head. <laughs> we we gotta learn how yeah. to play golf. We gotta yeah. learn to the low shot and the high shot, and the, you know, see the trajectory and the spin. And you gotta become somewhat of an artist. You yep. you can't be thinking of you know transverse abducting your right elbow you know on the 16th hole when you're tied to the lead <laughs> yeah you know and what, sure. what's your aoa and your spin numbers right you yeah. know that, that stuff doesn't matter under pressure anymore yep. your only your body can feel you know your heart's beating your hands are sweaty yeah. and getting in your head it just slows things down you become too conscious and you you mess up that that rhythmic fluidity that you need under pressure in a tournament when you're playing with your buds you need that effortlessness yeah Absolutely. I mean, I think that that's, that's what we're moving away. We, we've talked about this, the, the, the relationship again with artistry and uh, the scientificness, mm. right? You know, and you I mean, Steph Curry, you know, he's about to make a shot. You know, you think, oh, 90 degree. Oh, that's, that's why I'm not making any shots tonight. Let me put that in bow in a little bit. Yeah. Oh, here we go. And we see that with golfers all the time. Like, oh, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Come on. Come on. It's, it, it's one of the fastest movements possibly on earth. You know, it's not even this. This is slow compared to the golf swing from the downswing up. 0.2 seconds, you know, from the downswing to the ball impact. Come on. Well, this is what I would um, challenge anybody to do, okay, is if you go to a very technological, um, science-oriented instructor, very, very, I'm I'm talking about maybe to an extreme, very numbers, very graphs-oriented, and have them tell you what the swing should be like, what their model for the swing is. I want you to get that model. 
and I want you to go to a web.com event and I want you to look at the swings on the range. And this isn't from my experience, this is from my buddy who plays on the web.com. He, he had that happen, he had a coach, very into graphs, very into this is the most efficient way, this is how you need to swing. He goes to play his web.com event, you know, he's got a web.com web card. He's like, he's looking at people on the range and they all do some weird, funky stuff. Yeah. You know, their their right foot's moving, their left foot's moving, they're here, they're there. I mean, they're just doing, he's like, Gabe, they're all doing something weird. Like, no one teaches that. And he, he and he's not talking about a few people or the best people. He's talking about the whole range. Yeah. You know, so at the, at the end of the day, the, these are athletes. Just like an NBA player, just like an NFL player, MLB, MLB player, and, and golfers, you know, you could argue, or, uh, they have so much sensitivity. There's so many different shots. One 150-yard shot one day is a little bit different the next day. The wind could be different. You know, the greens could be a different firmness. I mean, the, the temperature could be different. That'd be changing, you know, the distance of your ball. So, well, I mean, it frustrates me a little bit um, as a golf coach, and, and that's, that's all-encompassing. Right, not not just golf instructor, holistic. golf coach, holistic. It frustrates me to see so much of a breakdown in swing mechanics. They do it because that's what sells. But the but I mean, do we see that in any other sport? Do they ever kind of hone in on Peyton Manning and talk about and compare his mechanics to Drew Brees? You know, has that ever happened in the NBA on a shot like Ray Allen versus Steph Curry? Is that is that happening? Like maybe on off on the side, like on NBA TV. You know when they're really kind of stretching out for content, but we're not seeing that in a live game. There's a lot of action they're talking about. There's a lot to talk about. We see the kind of you know uh, what is it the slow motion cameras you know that are just the kind of come You know you yeah got, um, exactly. Who's the instructor who always does that? Um, uh, yeah, Peter Costas. Peter Costas. Every tournament he's going to talk about some sort of type of mechanical technical information on you know. What swings swings the ball well? As if that the amateur can go out and apply that, mm. and I think that that's a very difficult thing. Yeah, you're talking about fascia lines. You're talking about uh, the funky things that everyone does. You're talking about ingrained patterns that have been developed over 10, 15, even maybe even 20 years. Yeah. If you think that you can go out there and make a change just by hearing something, you're gonna well, be, you're gonna be. Does very that information relate to you? You know, is that where you? should be the first place you work to improve. Yeah. You know, and that's one of the things that I've always had a little bit uh, challenge with is, you know, a student will come to me and he goes, Gabe, this is what I'm working on. You know, this is what I, I heard, I read, I saw. And so this is what I'm working on. I feel like this is the best way. But for me, in my experience, I, I go, you know what, I, I look at your swing, but I think it'd be most beneficial. You'd get your most improvement out of fixing this first. And that's usually the case every time, you know, because mm -hmm. they're not instructors, you know, I, they don't study the swing like me. They don't read the golf books I read. They don't watch the DVDs. They don't go to Hawaii. I don't go to Arizona. I, I spend years studying the golf swing, mm -hmm. you know, working with people, seeing what works, what doesn't work. And so sometimes when people try to, you know, do things by themselves or they hear something on TV, it could get, it's just, it has a, is it specifically for you? You know, and like you said, a lot of people don't understand, you know, that's 10, 15, 20,000, 100,000 golf balls, you know, that's been put into that swing to, to make it effortless like that. Good quote from Michelangelo that I like is, if you knew how long it took me to gain my mastery, you wouldn't be impressed at all. You know, and I feel like that goes for me. You know, some people go, gosh, Gabe, he, he's so charismatic. He's so funny. He's so good at talking. You guys, I've been doing that since I was in kindergarten. Yeah. I was just, that's the way I was. I was a yeah, chatterbox. Yeah. I moved. I was, I was the life animated, you know. And same thing with the, the Jordan Speech and the more Rory McAvoy's. I mean, they were, you know, Phil Mickelson. They're two years old hitting a little plastic cup around, you know, ball around. And then 15 years later, 20 years later of consistent practice, you know, good practice yep. with good mechanics, you're going to get uh, one of the world's best. And we can learn from those people. Yeah. We can learn from the mechanics. We can learn from the character traits. And we can um, actually deliver that to our students. Yeah. Do, 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 does, Am does Joe Schmo want, really want to get better? I mean, that, that's really what it comes down to because we're seeing this huge gap, this huge discrepancy between amateurs and professionals. We've seen it for a long time, but now it's, it's even bigger. It's a larger gap as technology starts to really help and make these pros even better than they've ever been the, with the ball, and the technology, uh, the drivers. We're putting everything into that. And, and Joe Schmo is still just shooting terrible scores. And, you know, 
because we're not fixing the problem. We're not fixing the root of the problem. We're still we're still obsessed over hitting it far and the aesthetics of what our swing look like, and we never work on short game. If everybody just worked on short game, it would take care of itself. We would see such an improvement in, in, in amateur play. Well, one of the things I learned, Fish, um, when I first started coaching was, let's say I give a student some information they need that I think they need to get better. You know, I, I, I would show up to the range, and I would see one of my students practicing. You know, they're just hitting ball after ball after ball. They're not using a camera. They're not using any type of feedback mechanism. Or maybe they're not even aware of what the ball fight's really doing. It's kind of mindlessly beating balls. Yeah. You know, building I, patterns. Building yeah. patterns. And I realized that one of the things that a student would need to do is, you know, I had to start developing organized practice schedules. I go, this, this you're going to hit this many balls working on this move. And then you're going to hit this many balls, you know, hitting a cut and making sure you miss it one way uh, on the right side of the pin. And I had to be very structured or else people just go out there, they don't even work on what I was giving them or they wouldn't even have the right feedback tools to kind of validate whether they're doing it or not, whether it's ball fly, whether it's using a camera. So there's, it's holistic, you know, like yeah. you could give someone the best information, the worst information, but what do they do with it once you leave? You know, do you give someone the game plan on, you know, how to practice it on the range, how to use it on the course and keeping people accountable. There's so many variables if you're talking about what's going to make someone better. And you have to take those all into account. For me, I thought if you're serious about getting better and I'm serious about you becoming better, it's not like you just show up to a lesson for an hour that I never see you again for two weeks or a month. Like I need to know what you're doing in between that time, how you're practicing, what's working, what's not working, what questions you have. They're the communication. I'm your coach. Yeah. I'm here to help you and just to come yeah. for 45 minutes and you know after you know my 10 15 years of playing golf and I just tell you 45 minutes and you leave there's a lot of stuff that could be missing and that's why the best students those students that have improved the most with me are the most consistent they come to me you know once a week once every two weeks but they, they continue over the six months to a year and their games really evolve it's consistency it always comes down to that I mean one of the best players in the world they've got the best coaches in the world traveling with them every single week that never changes the coaches are always there, day in and day out, with their players. I mean, that that never changes. That consistency is always there. Consistency is always there, and I I would always kind of mm, challenge people to take that first step. You know, yeah. go if you're afraid of going to see a coach, go see one. There, there's many different coaches out there, and you might have to jump around to find a, a, an instructor that you kind of have that chemistry with. Yeah, you know that, and you will see your game improve. I, I've worked with instructors, and I've absolutely 100% um, have seen my game get better and stuff where I, I tried to work on myself. I was like, I'll figure it out. And then I went to go see one of the instructors I, I really admire and he, he fixed me in one le one lesson. He's like, you're just doing this. And I'm like, I've been figuring out why I've been hitting that hook for, for the last six months. I thought I could do it myself. So there is definitely a way to you know piggyback off the 20, 30, 40 years or a decade of experience on the PGA Tour so we can all evolve quicker. And that's what we're doing with this podcast. You know, We're just going to keep delivering information over and over and over again um, that we can help people. But we get to get started. This podcast, you know, it's going to evolve. Yeah. you got to get started, though. Sure. Consistency can't get started if you don't start. Yeah, we talked about it. It's like, hey, what should we have on our wall? It doesn't look very professional. We're going to continuously add to this. Yeah. You're going to see the improvement of, the wall, of this wall. We talked about that. We're going to see the improvement of the studio. I think that that's important to show. Because what we see is always the end product, whether that's actually Bubba Watson swing yeah. or there's like an ESPN podcast, which it starts off with a bang. Hmm. You know, I think ours is all about starting, start just starting yeah. and then moving into something that's actually really yeah. impressive. And that's why we started. I just started vlogging, you know, trying yeah. to show people behind the scenes of just going to the store and us setting up. The lights, the cameras, the tripods, the tables, the mics, the computers, the memorabilia. What are we going to talk about? How are we going to structure this? You know, what days do we do the podcast? What times? What channel do we put it on? You know, how do we, you know, const do we study other podcast people? You know, like there's a lot of work that goes into it. You guys just going to see, you know, this 30 minute, 40 minute video and you don't see the hours put behind the thought process behind this yeah. and the troubles the troubles you know the all oh, audio didn't work one day or yeah. you know the video stopped recording or you know all those little I things. think that's what I want for this podcast I want it to be very real I, I want it to kind of I want people to listen to it and be like wow they're messing up with their words and they're not editing that out like this is kind of cool it's 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 more relatable and I think that that's what if you if you could pick one word that we want this to be um, just for our brands in general is just to be relatable I mean that that that's that's what it's all about. I mean, who cares to have like who wants that facade? 
mm-hmm. you know, like a movie set where we walk in and we're we're just every we're just Fish and Gabe, you know, we're normal guys. We really are just trying to enjoy the game of golf and, and just improve and help other people improve. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Fish and I, no bullshit type of mentality, you yeah. know. We're not trying to sell you guys on anything, you know. We're just going to share our own experiences and, you know, what we're aware of and what we see in other people and, and just talk about it, get, get ideas out there. Well, we're just, I'm just trying to give the experiences that I didn't get. I think that's I think that's a lot of times why people just have kids, you know. They yeah. just, they want to give their kids what they didn't have. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's it, it, it we have, we have a duty mm-hmm. from from what we've done and what we accomplished and what we will continue to work towards. We have a duty and an obligation to share that information. It does mm-hmm. it does it does us a disservice to mm-hmm. not spread that. Yeah, I think uh, we I think what's great about us two fish is we we don't we're we don't care what other people think. Yeah. You know, we got the balls to, to put ourselves out there and talk yeah. about whatever we want. We're not under contract with any company. If we want to say F this company or yeah. this company is trying to take your money, we can. Yeah. If that's our honest, uh, genuine opinion on it. That's just Fish and Gabe. That's, that's our, we're just representing ourselves. Sure. And our main goal is, you know, provide genuine content that creates value and, and to help everyone grow. Like you said, I, I went to Hawaii to work. With Kelvin me here, he spent you know 20, 30, 40 years you know studying the swing in detail, and I yeah. was able to condense most of that down in three months, and now I can pass it on to my student who's you know sixteen. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Like and that's what we're going to continue to do. Yeah, grab what's out there and condense it and make it into a relatable kind of entity hmm. to distribute to everybody, Something. no matter where you are in the world. Yeah. I I don't know why. You know, I've I've been on that platform for a long time. PJ Tour was the platform to be on. Not anymore. Not for me. This platform is bigger. This platform is more meaningful. And that's why I'm here. You can help more people. Yep. And you know what's crazy is we talked about is somebody like Fish or I, you know, being on YouTube and being on the internet could be more popular or be more well known than the 50th player in the world. Or who's Jason Day's coach? But more people maybe yeah. recognize me on a golf course because of my videos, and they respect and uh, appreciate you know the videos I've done with the juniors and the pros and the instructors. Well, well, they just know you. You know, Jason's coach is Colin, and he doesn't have an ability to get in front of cameras, and he's not put on a pedestal. And he, these guys are—they've got great stories. Hmm. They've got—they've they, got so much knowledge of the game, and that's—it's suppressed. We want to get it's that not encouraged. out. We want to get Colin on camera. We want to get we, that. We that, will. That. We will. I mean, that's what we'll do. We will utilize those kind of contacts and we'll get them out there and you'll get to hear their story. You'll get to hear their side. Well, we're already starting. Uh, next week, you know, we're going to be vlogging yep. uh, for my regular golf YouTube channel. Fish is going to be vlogging too. Yep. We're going down to Vegas and we're going to go hang out with our, you know, our buddy Sam's Pops, who's gotten a top 10 in every major, Ryder Cup, Caddy. I mean, yep. one, one, one of the most, you know, Accomplished caddies on the PJ yeah. Tour. Dave and, Woosley. Yeah. D- Dave Woosley. And we appreciate him. Once again, similar mind that says, guys, I got so many good stories. Yeah. I, I've, I've gotten, you know, <laughs> seconds in major championships and Ryder Cups. And I've seen people blow up and I've seen people, yeah. you know, shoot 59s. Bursting at the seams to share it. Yeah. And, yep. he, and he wants to share his knowledge and his wisdom and his experience. So you guys, so Fish and I can grow better, like yeah. grow faster and yeah. use that. Well, I mean, and we talked about that relationship, but that and in, the intrinsic, you know, and that extrovert and, and, and introvert. There's a there's a dichotomy that exists with the actual players and also caddies as well. Caddies are very outgoing. They're funny. They tell stories. They keep their player cool and calm under pressure. And these are the go-to guys. These are the right-hand men, and they don't get a say. Nobody gets to hear what they have to mm-hmm. say. And that's why I think one of the big portions of what we're going to do is we're going to be interviewing a lot of caddies. I mean, these guys have the stories, they have the personalities. You know, a lot of guys don't want to be on camera. You know, there's a lot of players that don't want that. We're going to interview um, and share any anybody who who matches our frequency and want to help people. Yeah. That, that's it. It doesn't matter if it's a player, if it's a caddy, if it's a marshal. Club or manufacturer a, you know. or club guy, club yeah. fitter. right? I mean, this game has so many different entities and so many different people that are involved in it. And I think that we're going to – it's not just caddies. We're going to bring in everybody we can. We're going to try to get gems from every nook and cranny of the game of golf so we can all evolve and move towards improve. Yep.
So, Absolutely. fish, let's wrap it up, you guys. We want to appreciate everybody watching. That's you know been Thank around you the channel. You know, make sure you go check out Fish's channel, my channel, my personal channel, showing you guys some behind the scenes, some vlogging, um, yeah. just an occasional rap. They're just showing you more, more of me, bringing you guys more into my life than I already do. Yeah. And we'll continue to you know make pot these podcasts on you know trying to get better. We want you guys always make sure you leave a comment down below. Leave a comment what topics you guys want to hear about, whether it be about sports, business, fitness, nutrition. Just the more you guys engage, the more you guys interact, the more you feedback you give us, the more we can cater the show exactly to what the majority wants to hear. Yeah. So thanks again, you guys. Make sure you check all the links down below. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope. Just check out the links, and we'll get back to you guys soon. We appreciate it, Fish. Always. Thanks a lot, guys. Movement towards improvement. MTI, peace. Ooh. That was that was like we gotta just got that in just in time. <laughs> it's gonna be close. Hey guys, Gibber right here, representing the movement towards improvement. In today's video, I'm over here back at the Legacy Golf Performance Center. I wanted to talk to you guys about the importance of little things. Okay, I think it's very important to do 